Good morning traders and welcome to today's live trading. Today is Thursday the 4th of April. As usual we are on the FTSE 100 so let me run you through today's bands. Um, you can see here on the chart we've got a band just a well just around really the 7400 level. One a little bit higher around 7425 and a couple that I've marked in below. Uh, 7375 and 7350. They're all quite nicely spaced actually. Uh, when you read the prices out like that, um, we are just sat between these particular two bands here near the daily pivot. Um, and what I've noticed really, uh, and if you trade this market as well, I assume it's probably looking similar on other markets, is that we're all getting very um, sort of bunched up. So, you know, price is sat on the pivot, the 200 is very flat. Um, if I go out to a higher time frame, you can see, you know, we're just getting a lot of um, directionless price, just sort of in the immediate past. Uh, you know, just with all the sort of who knows what's happening with the Brexit situation, uh, every potential avenue that MPs are looking at is getting voted down. Um, you know, we want to know what direction that we're going in and we're just not getting one at the moment um, so that's maybe playing a part we don't have much in the way of news today either on the um, financial calendar so um, I'm sure if anything comes out Brexit wise that will potentially have an effect but actual scheduled news announcements there's not there's not really anything for today so uh, at least that's out of the way so to speak um, one potential setup I like the look of is, um, I don't know why there's a, there is a candle missing here, I'm not sure why, um, is a move up to this band here and then a potential sell back down to sort of these levels down here, maybe this this low from yesterday. Um, that's staying within sort of the price range of the last couple of days and also um, it's just set up quite nicely on the higher time frame charts if that does happen um, but I mean we might have to do a bit of waiting today to see what happens um, and, you know if the price action is sluggish that's just one thing to be aware of um, and obviously other than that I will always just be watching to see how price reacts at these pre-identified levels um, and go from there really so um, I'm going to grab a drink and I'll catch you after the open Okay, so we've just gone uh, half 11, we're 25 to 12 now, and as you can see, we've had barely any movement uh, so far on the FTSE. Uh, I think the big red candle that you can see here was the opening candle, and since then, we've actually remained within the range of that candle for the next, well, what is that, three and a bit hours, um, nearly four hours, so not great movement. Um, I did say that I would like to have sold from this band up here, but we've never got close. Um, we've not even really tested the band below here for a potential sell, uh, potential buy, sorry, back up towards uh, this level up here with the 200. So uh, it's been a bit of uh, a boring morning. Um, so I'm going to nip out, grab some lunch and uh, be back this afternoon. Hopefully we get a bit more movement then. Okay, so I need to act quickly here. I'm just going to put a sell order in um, below this previous candle. The low is... 3.8 so I want to be at 2.6 it's going to need to come up just a little bit to let us in which I think it might no it's not just done it yet um, so yeah the, the order is obviously just below this candle here um, price just needs to pop up that little bit and let us into this trade before it starts falling away ideally um, this is just the um, part and pass of trying to record these trades live unfortunately um, obviously it's looking less likely we're going to get triggered but I will leave the order in to see if that does happen I'll bring it across there basically the thinking is we have you know we've not moved particularly well today trade, um, price wise uh, we grinded sideways a lot this morning uh, did have a move up into this band couldn't really do a lot with it I think it's actually out for lunch at this time um, and it then moved up. I was hoping to see more of a rejection here, but we just got this like tiny pin bar. 
and we're still above the 200 in the ATMA. It wasn't really worth taking, especially when you consider that if you, you know, we've not really broken that level. Um, so th there wasn't much I could do with that. Um, as it moved up here, I was watching for another, see if any more rejection came in. It didn't. We then moved up to the top of the band and we've seen a lot of rejection. Now, annoyingly, I'm not in this trade as it stands and it's flying down, but um, yeah, it just didn't get triggered, unfortunately. Um, I will leave the order in just in case it does decide to retrace on this candle or the next one. Because what might happen is we might get a reaction here, a bit of a regression, and then it goes again. Um, but if it's going to start closing down here, then I will cancel the order. Because if it starts to accept down here and then rejects, I don't really want to be caught in uh, in that. So, um, yeah, a little bit irritating there. But uh, like I said, I'll bring the ticket across and uh, watch how this one moves. If we do get triggered in, then um, the risk on the trade is looking up towards 8 points. I'm really looking sort of down towards this level here, so sort of 16 points after you took off the spread and things. 15-16 uh, points down to this level. Some markets in there, you can see it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens and uh, I'll catch up with you later on. Okay, five to four now, and you can see that trade has been stopped out. Um, it was looking at one point like we got pretty lucky in getting triggered into the trade because it popped straight up to the um, the order there to get sh short to sell, and then came straight back down, back down to the lows. So I was thinking that was quite lucky. Uh, unfortunately, we have just bounced there, so it didn't even really get past this first hurdle. Uh, you can see these closes over here. Um, it didn't even really get. Well, it, it didn't even poke through really that level. I was looking at that one and potentially, obviously, the pivot where we've had some stalling there. That would have married up nicely with the 200. So I was more expecting to see a bounce down here than uh, up here. But that just shows you the, um, you know, the strength of the move there. Um, because when you break this down to sort of fundamental things that are happening, you can see we've... We, We've moved up, put in a high, retraced, putting a low. We've broke past that high, put in a lower low, and now we've broken past that high. So really, um, you know, that structure that you like to see as price moves in a particular direction hadn't been broken. Um, but we were into what is a decent sort of resistance band there with a sort of couple of failures at a particular level. You hope just to be able to get enough uh, reward out of the trade for the risk that it takes and just on this occasion it, that's just not happened um, I think the risk on this one was about uh, looking about eight points or something um, so if we would got down to the pivot ish we'd have been looking at one to one um, and like I say if we'd have broke past there we were looking anywhere between one to one and two to one so uh, it was a good good setup it just obviously we didn't get the uh, the downwards selling um, pressure come in and uh, it's moved up again um, but before I finish the video I did have a subscriber ask um, about uh, let's have a look so when you take a trade do you ever move your stop to break even when you get to a certain point of potential profit to protect your account so for example 10 points or do you leave your stop in its original place and take a trade for a win or a loss um, also, do you, sit, do you do the same with the limit level or come out manually? The reason I'm asking is because I'm struggling at the moment with accepting the risk and not letting the trade breathe, so to speak. So if I'm in a trade and I'm looking for 1.1, um, say 15 points for example, when the market gets to 9-10 points in my favour, my stop is then at break even and it feels like a comfort zone, but then the majority of the time it gets hit out and it carries on in my favour and sends my head spinning. Um, am I sabotaging the good trades? What would you suggest? Um, so this is a good question, really, and um, I think if what one person does one thing, they will always be asked on the other. So, for example, uh, I I am um, an advocate of once my stop is there, I rarely come out of the trade until I've either got to my target level or my stop gets hit, and um, the reason for that is I have tested moving it to different points. So a couple of things that I tested were 
for example, um, in this trade, the stop starts up there. Now, a few things I tested were, I would look at the next sort of level of interest. And if we moved past that, then I would bring this stop down to the next sort of swing point. So that in this case would have been here where we had some stalling price action and then say we had to move through, then that my stop would come down to there um, and doing it that way. So sort of a trailing method. And then one thing I, I tested was if I had a trade like this and I identified that uh, say this pivot was a potential stopping point for the trade um, and the target was down at this low, then if we got to the pivot, then my stop would come to break even. Uh, and if it gets hit with break even, then it gets hit break even. Or if it comes down to the profit target, then they would be my two possible outcomes. Um, and then I just tested simply leaving my stop loss where it gets plotted straight away for the whole trade and just holding the same take profit level for the whole, whole trade and going for it that way. And personally, I found that this works much better than trying to move my stop to a more safer place or a, a lower risk place. Um, and instead, only taking trades that gave me at least one to one risk to reward, if not more, you know, preferably more like 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 2 to 1, etc. Those kind of trades not taking anything that's like 0 0.7 to 1 or 0 0.8 to 1, even though they might have a good risk to re um, a good success rate, um, avoiding those trades um, and only sticking to ones that at least are, um, the, you know, the reward is the same as the risk. Um, and I found over the trades that I tested that that worked much better. Now, that doesn't mean that that's the answer. And there are plenty of traders out there that use the break even method and I think if you're the type of person that needs that then it's definitely worth doing because what I found from the trades that I tested were that even if I were to use the break even method so whereby again say we're in this trade um, price comes down to this pivot level and I move my stop to break even so that if it comes up and stops me out of break even you know I don't lose any money then Yes, you're going to have less, you're going to have less losing trades and you're going to have less winning trades. You're going to have quite a lot of break even trades, but you will still be profitable. I, it didn't, it didn't take me from profitability to not making money. Um, it was just a slower process. And actually, I personally would find getting stopped out at break even more frustrating than having a you know, full positions, uh, stop loss, um, sometimes, and, you know, sometimes not, sometimes it coming back to the break even point and then coming down to the full position win, I would find coming out at break even more often more frustrating. So that's why I opted to go the way I, I, I have done, but I know some people when they ha when they lose any amount of money that can really mess with their heads. So I can't remember who it was that first mentioned it, but you've got to look after your sort of financial capital, but also your mental capital when trading. And if coming out at break even a few more times, you know, keeps you sane, keeps you calm, and um, you know, able to continue trading when when in in live conditions, then that is a very worthwhile uh, consideration. And if you think that coming out of those trades at break even is going to benefit you in the long run performance wise by all means go for it and then you know maybe monitor it for six months and think how much profit am i missing out by doing this if it turns out to be not much depending on what your strategy is like then great you're doing the right thing if it's only a little bit and you think the trade-off is worth the mental capital saved that you you, you know that you do by coming out at break even then you you know that's that's a cost you'll pay to stay calm in the markets, or if you think actually, as I get more experienced, I don't really care about losing trades as much as I did. I think I'm going to change this slightly. Then go with that. Um, it's just sort of a trial and error, really, um, seeing what works for you. There's no real wrong or right answer, um, but you should definitely consider your mental capital as well as your financial capital. I think that's the thing that a lot of traders overlook. 
um, and definitely, like I say, worth thinking about. But I'll stop talking. I realise I've been talking for quite a while now. Um, I'm going to end the video there. Unfortunately, a losing trade this week. Um, it never really got close, did it, to be getting down to the level that we were looking at. But never mind, that happens sometimes. And like I say, um, for me, I would much rather take this full losing position than have come out at break even only to see the trade roll over. Um, and that's what I've done this time. Um, so as always, I hope the video has been useful and helpful. Um, I hope you managed to take something away from it that does in some way aid your training or trading, sorry, and uh, gets you thinking about other things. Um, if you have any suggestions or comments or anything, please pop them in the comments down below. If you haven't done already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next week.